What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video, this time continuing our every soloable mount that comes from a raid video in part 1 we did from Vanilla to Wrath of the Lich King and in part 2 we are doing uh, Cataclysm to Mr. Pandaria. Now there will be one raid missed from this video and that will be Siege of Orgrimmar. While it is soloable, it is going to add quite a lot of length onto this video and it is a little bit more difficult so I'm going to cover that in its own video but everything else will be included just to let you know in case you were looking forward to that for whatever reason. Um, in the, the first mount up in this video is going to be the Reigns of the Drake of the South Wind, which comes from Alakir in the Throne of the Four Winds, and it's on about a 1% drop chance. You'll find the raid in Uldum all the way to the south, it'll be in like a, a higher platform you could see on the map not too long ago, and we're going to head inside and we're going to kill the four kind of bosses on the outside of the plateaus. I would recommend starting with Rohash, um, just because he does like a silence if you're not on his platform and then it doesn't really matter which order you kill the other two in. I'm just kind of doing the old school tactic when it was a little bit more difficult to solo but now they die in one to two hits and um, I'm doing it on 10 man difficulty I believe but either way it dies very very quickly and you can do this on 10 or 25 man does not matter does not impact the drop chance. We're going to click the swirling vortex once those bosses are dead and that will take you to Alakir's platform and beat him down, he'll break the platform, you'll beat him down again, and then loot the item, and then hopefully you've got the mount. So that is the first raid up on our list, and then the next one up is going to be the Firelands, and from the Firelands we're going to be able to get the Flame Talon of Alice Resort, uh, that comes from Alice Resort, and that's on about a 2% drop chance, and then the next drop is the Smoldering Egg, which will give the Pure Blood Firehawk, the mount that I'm still after from this place, and that comes from Ragnaros on a 1% drop chance, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get. Um, you can do Firelands on 10 or 25 man, on normal or heroic, it doesn't matter, it won't impact the drop chance of the mounts, so just do whichever one you prefer. 25 man's always better as you will get a better yield for loot and gold, but it's up to you. And um, To get to the Firelands you will need to go to Mount Hygel, which is in Kalimdor, and then to the south of the Mount Hygel you'll find the, the Sulfurian Sphere, and inside we can go. So once we're in, this is going to be quite a long run and there is quite a lot we need to do to get to Ragnaros. So I would recommend clearing most of the trash on your way to the first boss, just because one of the bosses activates when you've killed X amount of trash. Um, so just basically murder things along the way, as it will save you time later on. It seems a bit annoying now, but it's it'll be worth it in the long run. As you can see, a creature the uh, as the creatures of Firelands fall, a huntsman horn sounds in the distance. That's basically just the cue to say that you're progressing the bar to make the boss summon. So we're going to head to Beftalak as the first boss. That's going to be in Beftalak's lair. We're going to head up here. You, you can skip most of this trash if you want to. There's no particular need or want to kill this. And I'm not too sure if this actually impacts the huntsman call. I've never really seen the sound, the, the cue, and when I've been killing this trash, but either way, you'll have plenty of trash to kill in the raid anyway, so there's no necessary need to, to kill it. Once we're done with that, we're going to head to Bathtalak, and you can kill her nowadays before she even goes up, as you can see there, but you will still have to wait for her to go up and then come back down again. Never going to keep it down. And then we're going to head to the next boss, which is going to be um, Alice Resort, which is going to be able to, the one that drops our first mount. Now, generally, I avoid this path that I'm about to take. Uh, I even do a U-turn. Um, just because there's some mobs there that can bug out and it'll keep you in perpetual combat. Like, the mob won't spawn. It'll just kind of be there, in, uh, invincible, and you'll never be able to kill it. So I generally avoid going that way just because I hate that. But now that you're level 110, it, it's a lot less likely to aggro it. It's just I don't like taking the risk. And this way we have a lot of trash that we can help make the bo uh, boss spawn a little bit quicker. Now generally what I try and do is have the boss spawn before I go to Beftalak, uh, so, sorry, before I go to Alice Resort. Just because then once you're done with Alice Resort and Lord Ryolith, he's usually just done his path around the room and you can grab him on the way. Uh, it's usually quite nice timing if you, you do it quick enough. So we're going to kill everything in this area, kill the pile of eggs, and then we're going to kill the two firehawks. And then once those are both down, we can pop um, Major Staghelm, or Major Domo even. And then eventually he's going to do some RP and Ellis Resort will spawn. Now, the fight, if you're lower eye level, might be, I wouldn't say difficult, just a little bit more uh, annoying to deal with. 
At level 110, you can kill her before she even flies up in the air. But if you're not able to, she'll put feathers on the ground. As you can see, those three feathers on my screen. Once you click three feathers, the, the feather bar will fill up and you'll be able to fly. And just fly around and kill her in the air. It shouldn't take you very long. Uh, you have to be pretty low level, low eye level to, to not be able to do that. But if you are struggling, just fly in the air, fly through the rings, and that'll give you a haste buff, and then you'll be good to go. So next up, we're going to run through this gauntlet uh, up to Lord Ryolith's area. And you're just going to be on his feet. If you have cleave, I would recommend doing cleave because it will take him down a bit quicker. Um, but either way, he's going to die pretty damn quick anyway. And he'll drop. Basically, once you damage the feet to a certain point, his body armor will drop off and then his like main body will be damageable. And then he'll finally be able to die. So if you're quick enough, which we were slightly too slow, I believe here. You'll be able to pick up um, Chanox on his way. Yeah, he's just pathed away. So if you're a little bit quicker, you can grab him as he's kind of just pathing through this area. So we're going to chase after him. I do end up aggroing this pack, which is... This is the pack that I wanted to avoid. It's the, the pack that can bug out. Basically, this guy in the center just doesn't aggro. And he just stays, like, invincible forever. Uh, so it ends up being quite annoying. So we're going to jump over here and we're going to grab Chanox as he is necessary to, to open the door. So we're going to grab this guy. Things to note, I mean, realistically, if you're high level like this, he's going to drop pretty quick. But one of the dogs, I think it's Rage Face. And um, if you don't put a dot on him or something, he'll jump on your face and start basically damaging you for a long period of time, stunning you. So it is worth having some kind of dot on it just to prevent that from happening. But if you're high gear levels, it shouldn't be an issue. Or if you have something like Rushing Jade Wind to keep active or basically uh, death and decay or anything like that that you can drop down that will damage the dog while you're stunned that should be enough to break it from its um, frenzy anyway so next we're going to run over to Balarak and nothing really too special there once again it's literally just a, a DPS race in a sense uh, only if you're lower eye level lower gear or lower level even and then we're going to click that orb that will summon the bridge and once the bridge is fully created we can run across and we can kill Major Domo. Now this is on 10 man I think. I think I was just trying to get through these as quickly as possible. But on 25 man there will be a few more cats and they can be really annoying. I, I absolutely hate this mob because it, it's just so like stupid. It jumps at you and if it lands on you it's going to stun you and itself for like 10 seconds. And then you just have to sit there and wait for a 10 second stun. Uh, nothing really important for with Major Domo. Just DPS him down. Um, he'll always be in cat form I believe because... You've not got enough players in the raid to make him Scorpion, so just kill him, basically. And then we're finally at Ragnaros. So we're going to run down here. And this is going to be the guy that can give us the pure blood Firehawk. The one that more people are after. Um, so just bob him down. Nothing too special once again. If you want to, when he, he does the splitting bro, uh, blows, you can kill the adds that spawn. But once again, if you're lower level, you might need to, because they do AoE damage when they hit the hammer, but no real need to do it. I mean, it makes things a little bit quicker if you do. But eventually, you're just going to kill him. Um, if you kill him too slow, you will get multiple of those phases. But if you don't, then he's just going to die pretty damn quick. So, with Firelands out of the way, the next raid on our list is going to be Dragon Soul, and this one is going to be quite a long one once again. Uh, to get to Dragon Soul, I would recommend going to the old Dalaran and taking the portal to the uh, caverns of time it just ends up being the quicker way of getting there so go to like the mr pandaria shrine and then go to dalaran and then yeah from there and um, from this raid we're going to get the experiment 12b we're going to get the blazing drake and also the life binders handmaiden uh, experiment 12b is on a one percent drop chance the blazing drake is on a three percent and the life binders handmaiden is on a one percent now, to get the Life Binders, hand, uh, Life Binders Handmaiden, Tongue Twister, you do need to do the raid on Heroic, and if you do kill Deathwing on Heroic, you'll have a chance of getting both the Blazing Drake and the Life band, uh, Binders Handmaiden. So I would recommend doing it on Heroic. And to get to the raid, we're going to go to the Caverns of Time, which is in Tenaris, and we're going to fly all the way down this kind of windy path. And then once we're there, there's going to be kind of a few different routes, but just follow the route that I take and you'll end up at the dungeon, no problem. It's a bit slow though, this this raid will take you quite a bit of time as well, unfortunately. Especially one of the fights is um, just long by default, so it's pretty unfortunate. 
Although the rest of it shouldn't be too bad. They have done some quality of life stuff in here as well. For example, you can kill... Um, what's his name? Not Azumat. One of the bosses... General... Wow, I can't actually remember his name. General Vizax? Is that it? Or is that from Ulduwa? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, one of the bosses you can kill without killing the trash now, which is great. It means you can just get in there, kill him, and get out. Well, previously you had to go around the room and kill all of the trash before you could get out of the room, which was really, really annoying. So as you can see, we are on 10-man heroic. You can do this on 25-man heroic or 10-man heroic. You can do it on normal as well, but as I said, you will drop the chance of getting the life binders handmaiden. So just doing it on heroic gives you the chance of getting all three mounts instead of just two mounts. So I would recommend heroic. No real difficulty increase, really, for a level 110. So I definitely would recommend doing that. First boss up is going to be... What's this guy's name? More chunk. How could I forget? And we will split in two, and he does have a shared HP pool, so you can cleave them down if you are struggling a little bit, but it really shouldn't be that difficult. Next up, it doesn't matter which way you go. You can go to the right drake or the left drake. You have to kill them both anyway, so we're just going to head to the right drake first, and then that will take us down here. And you can pull the... I would just recommend running straight to the boss. There's no need to kind of deal with the trash. I don't know if the trash still pulls when you pull the boss, but basically just DPS it down. Now the trash doesn't even pull anymore, so that's great. And um, it used to be as soon as you hit the boss, all the trash would aggro. It's no longer the case. Uh, if you're a little bit slow in the fight, it'll summon some oozes that will slowly walk towards the boss. You should kill it before any of the oozes reach the boss, but if you don't, I guess you could kill one of the oozes. It really doesn't matter, though. You should have no problem with that whatsoever. Next up is Warlord Zonaz. That was his name. Not General. This guy's a Warlord. So, once again, run straight to the middle of the room, bop that guy down. Um, he does spawn a ball, which you want to kind of bounce off yourself to stop it hitting the walls. The only reason you don't want it to hit the wall is because it's going to knock you in the air and do a bit of fall damage, but even if it does hit the wall, it's not really going to kill you or do anything too extreme. It's just a little bit annoying. So if you can, make it bounce off yourself and hit the boss. But either way, he should be down before the ball really spawns, and if it doesn't, he should be dead shortly after that. So once again, we're going to head back to the main room, and then we're going to click the red drake, I believe it was, and he will take us to the top part of the, the Wormrest Temple. Up here, there's going to be some RP. You will have to wait for a little bit. The Cursed RP of Dragon Soul. And it's a shame because this raid could have been so cool, but honestly, this was one of my like least enjoyable raids. One, it went on for way too long, and two, just some of the encounters weren't very fun. In my opinion, at least. You know, you, you're going to get some people who enjoyed it, but there wasn't really many fun encounters in the place. Like things like Spine of Deathwing, which you'll see through all there, just... Nah. Nah. So eventually the RP will be over. We, we had a good chit-chat while we are waiting, but... He will spawn a portal, and that will take us to the Eye of Eternity. So you just run through there, click the orb in the middle, and then you're going to have to go through some waves of trash. Nothing too special you need to know, just literally kill it all down. And eventually, we're going to get to the point where a mini boss will spawn. I think it's another two waves of trash after this. Oh, there we go. One more wave. So the mini boss down, and then the boss itself will spawn. Now, this is a little bit of a timer. Um, obviously, we one-shot it, but if your DPS is lower or your level's lower, then you want her to... You want to kill her before she goes into any of the phases. Like, if you get a lightning phase, it's not too bad if you get a frost phase, because you can do that solo by running around clicking the or hitting the crystals. But if you get a lightning phase, the only way to do it is to wait out the timer, which is like an eight-minute timer. So it wastes a lot of time. So you want to either try and make her have a frost phase first. You can tell by the weapon uh, enchant she has when you start the fight. Or you just kill it before any of that happens, which most people should be able to do. And uh, once we're done with that, you need to speak to the NPCs, and then you're going to speak to Thrall and get him to start the encounter. I think I don't speak to him a second time. Oh, no, no, never mind, we do. And then Deathwing's going to talk, and then you're going to have what some people consider, like, the worst trash in the game. But the reason behind it, I mean, I understand back in Dragon Soul, Bloodlust didn't reset when you kill the boss. So you had, a, a what, an eight-minute timer or whatever on Bloodlust to do it again. And if they let you go straight to the boss, 
then you'd just be stood there waiting for bloodlust anyway. I mean, I guess you could just jump off and run back in. That would be quicker. But they wanted to avoid that. So they gave you trash that would take roughly, you know, a few minutes so that by the time you were ready to pull the boss, Bloodlust was just coming up and it didn't feel as bad. But yeah, just this kind of trash did not feel fun. It felt draining, like everyone dreaded doing this trash, especially with the RP in between as well. It just didn't feel great. Because you can't really control the tempo of it. I guess that is the biggest issue. You can't just slaughter it all really quick. You still have to wait for the drakes to fly in and... Yeah. So just keep killing these down. You can interrupt them, I believe, and they'll walk down, or you can just hit them with range spells, um, but silencing them will make them come down as well. And eventually, once you kill enough of them, Deathwing will summon the boss. It does take some time. Okay, there we go. We're finally done with that trash. Deathwing will come back for part two of his speech. Even though while we're on this platform, he could probably just like blast us all and kill us, but hey, plot armor. So he's gonna waffle on with himself for a little bit. And then eventually, he's gonna summon Ultraxion, which is gonna be the first Drake or first boss in here that can drop us a mount. And that is gonna be Ex Experiment 12B, which is on a 1% drop chance. Although. Even though that's on a 1% drop chance, a lot of people have been getting this mount recently. So I'm not too sure if it was actually increased from 1%, but originally it was a 1% drop chance. So who knows, maybe it's been stealth increased? I don't think so, I guess people have just been getting more looker. But either way, I have started to see a lot more people get this mount drop, so... Who knows, maybe 1% maybe isn't accurate. We're gonna kill him down. It is a bit of a timed fight, once again, if you don't do it before he does the, I think it's Hour of Twilight, you'll die. But there's no reason you shouldn't be able to do it before then. And then we have to wait, and there's going to be a little cutscene that we can skip, that's why I'm spamming escape. Fral's going to say he's not going to fail us, and then he fails us. Good old Fral. Good old green Jesus. And then we're going to skip that cutscene, run onto the ship, and talk to this guy. And that will start the next kind of gauntlet event. Oh, it, basically this is the boss fight, but it does involve some trash as well. So you're going to have these um, harpoons, but you don't do anything with them. And then you're going to have some drakes and stuff. And basically you just want to kill the, the, the ads as quickly as possible, because that's going to be what causes the um, boss itself to kind of start. So whenever you see a drake, just throw any ranged spells you've got at it, try and kill it as quickly as possible because that will help make things go faster. There are going to be these little goblins that spawn as well called sappers, and I would recommend standing in those big swirls as well because they will reduce the damage your ship takes. If your ship takes too much damage, it will die and you'll basically lose the fight. Um, I would recommend killing the sappers as well when you see them, as the, you go, you can see it, it's like invisible, it's like a little rogue, as they do try and do damage to your ship as well. So once again, we're Actually, we're going to ignore that swirly, apparently, but as I said, I would recommend standing them. Eventually, the harpoons will pull in the drakes, but if you have any ranged spells, you should be able to kill them pretty quick anyway. And then a few waves of those, and you're eventually going to get the boss itself to spawn. So it does do like a little announcement that there is a sapper on the ship, and just look out for it. And then, eventually, the boss will come down. Eventually. As I said, this raid is quite long just because there's a lot of stuff that you can't really power through. Like, it isn't quicker just because you're doing more damage. You've still got to wait for the, the predefined timers, which is uh, not very fun. Okay, and he finally comes down. Um, you can cleave them if you want, if you have like dots or whatever, but basically just focus all your damage on Blackhorn and he'll siphon health from the Drake. Eventually the Drake will die or fly away and um, you'll be able to kill Blackhorn finally. Once you're done with that, go back and speak to the, the guy we spoke to before. And then he's going to start the next fight, which is the Spine of Deathwing. So this fight is a little bit annoying. and The way I would recommend doing it is to kill three tentacles and then kill the three adds that come from the three tentacles. And then the way I do it is just to walk left and right consistently. You can take an alternative method where you sit in one of the holes where the tentacle was, and that'll keep you kind of grounded. But basically, if you don't 
keep running left and right or you don't ground yourself, then Deathwing will roll over and you'll, um, I don't know if that's going to affect the audio. My monitor just went off because I was talking so long. Um, and you'll basically you'd be thrown off the back of Deathwing. So that's why I run left and right consistently. But the alternative method is just to sit in one of the holes and then you'll be fine. The way I do it is I run left and right and then I kill all those slimes that spawn. Um, and I don't have an amalgamation out until I have enough slimes down. Because basically the way you do this fight is to have nine slimes on dead on the ground. And then you get an amalgamation, you run the amalgamation through the nine slimes. And it'll be basically become like a nuclear reactor. And then once it has nine slimes you can kill it right next to the plate. It'll blow up the plate and then you'll be able to DPS a tendril. Once the tendril is dead, the plate will come off and you'll be able to progress to the next plate. And it's basically rinse and repeat. The fight does speed up the, the further you go on because you get more adds and more tendrils. But yeah, it's pretty slow. So there you go. We see you've got the nine stacks. The plate will blow up. And then we're going to DPS down the tendril. And then the um, plate will just completely come off. And then I'm going to repeat the same tactic where I basically just kill all the other ten uh, the tendrils that are in the room, or the tentacles, uh, leave one alive, and then I'm just going to DPS down the slimes until I have enough, basically. And it's nice not having an amalgamation up, because then you can't accidentally kill it, it's not in the way, you know, it's, it's just chilling. So, we're going to wait till I have about nine slimes. You can kill them now, or you can just leave them to slap you, it doesn't really matter at 110, they're going to do close to negative damage to you anyway. So once I've counted nine, I'm going to pull over the, I'm going to kill the tentacle, which is going to summon an amalgamation. That guy's going to run at me, I'm going to kite him through all of the slimes, and there you see, he's straight to nine. He's a nuclear reactor, and then I'm going to wait for him to explode. If you're a lower level, you don't want to stand on top of the explosion, it will hurt, but as max level, it's going to do absolutely nothing. And then we move on to the final plate, which, once again, is going to be literally a rinse and repeat before we're going to kill all the other tentacles that spawn. We're going to leave one alive, and then we're just going to kill down the slimes. Because there's so many holes now, the, uh, the, the slimes are going to spawn a lot quicker. Meaning this phase should not take very long at all. Basically it starts to ramp up in pace, which is nice. As this fight is really, really unfun to do solo. Especially if you're using my awkward method of running left and right. I mean, I prefer it. It just makes things less unfortunate to happen. I mean, you can accidentally fall off this way. But I've fallen off trying to get my amalgamation over to the left side to pick up all the slimes and stuff. Well, if they're in the center like this, it's there's on, the only error is your own of not remembering to follow like the rhythm of left, right, left, right. And you, once you do it a couple of times as well, you start to pick up the rhythm quite easily. Now, I accidentally, like an idiot, kill the amalgamation a little bit too prematurely. Uh, he didn't have nine. I think I accidentally tabbed onto him and hit him with a spell. I didn't mean to kill him. Maybe I did, who knows? Maybe I'm still noob. So we're gonna have to wait for more slimes again, but we should have roughly enough around now. Oh, definitely enough by now. So I should be able to kill all these off. Maybe I'm keeping myself a little bit safe. There we go, we killed them all off. And then we're gonna go and pick up a tentacle. As you see, I'm kind of zigzagging my way along just to make sure we keep up the, the left, right, left, right pattern. As if you get baited into running in a straight line, you're probably gonna fall off. So it has nine once again. We're going to let it explode, and then once it does, we can move over and kill the Tendril, which is going to put us onto the final fight. Yay! Dragon Soul's nearly done. Uh, don't don't jump off the platform like I do. We're going to loot the chest. You're not going to get any mount from that one, so there's nothing in particular we need to care for. Uh, once you've looted the chest, you can speak to Thrall, and I think you have to speak to him a second time to actually make the Deathwing fight start. And then once that does start, we're going to be able to get our final potential at two mounts. We're going to get the Blazing Drake, which I said is on a 3% drop chance, and the Life Binders Handmaiden, which is on a 1% drop chance. So speak to Thrall again. Start the encounter. And it doesn't matter what order you do them in. Even if you lower gear, it shouldn't really matter that much. Basically just run along the platforms and kill each of the arms or the wings. Um... And then once all of them are dead, the head of Deathwing will spawn down as well. But it should die so quick anyway that it, it really, really doesn't matter. So once all four are dead, Deathwing's head will pop down. And the only real thing you need to know about the head phase is it's going to summon some slimes over and towards his head. If they hit, they'll heal him. But 
you should do so much damage that it isn't an issue. I mean, maybe if you're on 25 heroic with slightly lower level, might come into play. But yeah, just in case, kill them before they hit the head, and you're good to go. Loot the chest, and you may or may not have a mount in there. Now, once again, the level, like the 10 or 25 man, does not Im impact the mount drop. That is a bait. A lot of people think because it gives more loot, it gives a better chance of the mount. Isn't true. The mounts are on the set, like their own little roll table. So they either are there or they're not there. There's no extra chance. So next up, we're going to be moving on to Mr. Pandaria. And we're going to be doing the Mogushan Vaults to get the Astral Cloud Serpent. One of the, the mounts I really, really do still want. And that is going to be on a 1% drop chance from Elagon. Now to get to Mogushan Vaults, we're going to head to Kunlai Summit. And up in the north of Kunlai Summit, you'll find the entrance to Mogushan Vaults. It does not matter if you do this on 10-man, 25-man, normal, or heroic. Each difficulty will once again have the same chance of giving you the mount. So just do it on whichever one you prefer to do. We're going to head inside, and we're going to head towards the first boss. You can kill this trash if you want, or you can completely ignore it. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to pull the first boss. Now these guys have a shared HP pool, so AoE, talents, or whatever are more favorable, um, as they're going to help kill the boss faster. So just round them up and do some AoE, and then you'll be good to go. Then we're going to head through here, and we're going to head to the trash. Now stand right on top of these guys. If you stand a little bit away, they won't aggro, which means they won't actually summon. So yeah, just make sure you do stand right on top of them as a 110. Then we're going to kill Feng. He's not really going to do anything we care about. Uh, just kill him down. He'll pick up each staff. He does have a staff that summons like a a lightning orb, the very first one he picks up, which will stun you for a short period. So do try and avoid that if you do get that far. And then he also does like an epicenter, which will blind you or make you have a reduced mischance. A um, little bit annoying, but once again, isn't really going to do that a great deal. Outside of that, there's nothing else to really worry about. Then we're going to clear out all of this trash. We have to kill every single trash mob here, even the guys in the air. So if you have a ranged spell, well, you'll need some kind of ranged spell to kill the pterodactyls. And then that will make the boss spawn. Once every bit of trash is dead, he'll land. And this is a bit of a DPS race, as if you don't kill him fast enough, the, the fight does do progressively more and more damage. But shouldn't really matter to a 110 player. But yeah, just in case, save your cooldowns, especially defensive cooldowns, for later on in the fight as that's when the fight gets a little bit more difficult. But just try and kill him as quickly as possible, that's all you need to do there. Then we're going to speak to Chen. Actually, uh, Law Walker Choi then, not Chen. And he's going to start the next bit of trash. There'll be these random kind of spirits that spawn. It's going to be this pack first, then it's going to be the, the pack behind with on the... the not Kodos, the... Wow, I'm terrible at this game now. I can't remember the name of anything. The... No, I can't. I'm just going to give up. I can't remember the name of those mobs. For some reason, something starting with M is in my head, like motion or something. Motion? No. Motion? I don't know. Going insane. So then we're going to head up the stairs and we're going to start the next encounter. And um, you'd need to kill each of these spirits as quickly as possible. Uh, the next one is the only one that I could consider difficult. He'll basically, if you take too long on the fight, summon a rain of arrows that will pin you down. And you'll need some kind of like bop, or you'll need a pet to break you out of it, or you'll need to put some kind of AoE on the ground before it happens. Otherwise, you'll be pinned to the ground and it's a little bit annoying. Um, so I would recommend something like prepare with something like that just to avoid that happening. But otherwise, you should be fine. I mean, if you have a pet, just command your pet to hit it. It'll be like an arrow in your body that you can be killed. And um, if you have any AoE, keep that drop down. If you have bop, bop yourself beforehand. Like, there's multiple ways to get out of it, basically. So next up, we're going to head down to the, the boss that's going to give us the mount. So quite a, a nice quick run. It isn't too bad doing this place. And um, we can skip most of the stretch. Actually, I end up bugging out. I still have the, the debuff from the um, last boss, which basically makes me kind of like an enemy. As you can see, all the, the trash is neutral to me. And that causes me an issue in the moment because Cho is going to run through. And Cho is going to be my enemy. I can't actually talk to him. He's going to be like, fight me. 1v1 right now. I want that mount. So yeah, the only way I could get around this was unfortunately to uh, jump off and die. So interesting little, I guess, bug. But hey, happens sometimes. So you're going to speak to Cho if you're not aggro to him. And then that will eventually summon Elegon. 
The Elegon fight's fairly simple, you just run into the middle of the platform. If you're taking too much damage, which you shouldn't be, you can run back out and reset this kind of stacking debuff, which will cause you to take more damage. Um, but you shouldn't really need to do that. Just DPS down Elegon and you'll be no problem. He does get to a point where he'll, he'll summon like orbs, and the more times you kill every single orb, the more damage the boss will take. So if you're at a lower level or whatever, I would recommend trying to kill as many waves of orbs as possible, as that will help. So we're going to head to Throne of Thunder next, which we'll need to go to Town Long Steps for first of all. As you can see here, there's a, an NPC with portals. Um, if you've not done the quest chain to start this off, you'll need to speak to them and do the quest line. Uh, it takes like, it's like two quests. Um, and that will give you a flight, but like you'll go on a flight there and then eventually you'll unlock the portal. But for this one, we're just going to, we've already got it unlocked, so we can go straight here and click the portal. And then that will take us to the Throne of Thunder. Eventually. If it if it ever loads. Come on. There we go. So we've done that. And you can click this orb, that'll take you to the land as well. So another uh, loading screen, unfortunately. But it does save time from going over the water. Unless you've got like a water strider. Then it's, it's probably going to be around the same time, depending on the, the loading screen time. Um, so we're going to head down here, we're going to head to the raid entrance, and from here we're going to be able to get two mounts, we're going to be able to get the Clutch of Jikun, which comes from Jikun, and we're also going to be able to get the Spawn of Haradon, which comes from Haradon. Uh, both of these mounts are on a 1% drop chance, so fairly low chance, but there are two mounts from here, so at least you've got a decent chance of getting something. There are a few other like pets and stuff from this place as well, so it is quite a worthwhile place to run. But eventually we're going to run all the way over to the dungeon entrance. And there's two ways you can get there. You can either go through the cave coming up here. And that will give you kind of like a shortcut. Or you can go up the stairs. And that will take you to like the the true entrance. Where there will be a world boss there called Nalak. Which you could kill if he's alive to get another mount. So worth doing if you are around there, which can give you the Thundering Cobalt Cloud Serpent on a 0.1% chance. So this is the entrance to the Throne of Thunder. And you can do this on 10 man, you can do this on 25 man, heroic, normal, doesn't matter. The mounts are still, once again, going to have exactly the same chance of dropping. So once we are ready to go, and those are the two mounts that you can get, the Clutch of Jikun, as I mentioned before, and the Spawn of Haradon. Uh, the Clutch is a flying mount, so... Definitely nice for Legion with the, the fact that we can actually fly now. And we're going to head inside. Most of this trash is skippable. If you hug the wall to the right here, you can actually skip it, but I end up just flying through it, and it still does aggro anyway. Uh, you do need to kill that guy there, though, to make the door unlock. And then we're going to have the first boss, which is um, Jinrock. Now, this was actually not too long ago, like uh, in Warlords of Draenor, this was quite a fun, fun fight to solo. This place in general was quite fun to solo. There was a lot of like weird mechanics and strategies that you had to take. But now, it's literally just a case of smack it and it'll die. Um, if you're a little bit slower, it'll pick you up and throw you into a wall and a pool will spawn. And you could stand in the pool to have increased damage if you want, but you shouldn't really need it. Um, you do take a bit more damage while in there as well, so it isn't ideal. You could do that, it will give you a damage increase. Uh, 110 player, especially on 10 man, should have zero issue with doing that very quickly. We're going to head across the bridges, do watch out for the kind of lantern guys in the middle, as if you hit those they will knock you backwards, and most most of the time knock you off the platform and you'll die. So do try to avoid that. And then once again we need to kill this kind of major mob in front of the door to make the door unlock. And then we're going to be at our first boss which can drop a man. That is going to be the uh, it's going to be Haradon, which drops the spawn of Haradon. So if you're lower eye level, this fight might take a bit of a time, or not even lower eye level, lower level in general, as he does have quite a bit of HP and he does have a, a, a debuff the oh sorry I guess a buff in his case that will make him take uh, take reduced damage. The way you get rid of that buff is to wait for a mob called a Dinomancer to spawn, and um, use the the item that the Dinomancer drops when it dies, and that will make Haradon run into a gate which will make him damage himself and reduce one of the stacks. Um, and you rinse and repeat that until he has no stacks, and then he'll die. When he gets low, he will summon in another guy as well. Um, but you can ignore that guy and just focus on Haradon and kill him. Now this trash can drop a sand. Uh, it's like a sand something pet. And it's fairly valuable if I remember. I don't know how good of a battle pet it actually is. 
but I'm pretty sure you can get a little bit of gold for it, so do make sure you are looting the mobs. And once these uh, tra trash packs die as well, make sure you stick around as he will summon like a, a spooky version of them as well. And I'm not too sure if they aggro or not if you're far away from them, so it's worth just sticking around to finish them off. It only takes a few seconds. And my voice is starting to go a little bit because we have been recording for, uh, what's this now, like 30 odd minutes straight, so do give me that. Here's a bit of talking. We're nearly done. This is the last raid we're going to be covering in this video. So once again, killing the spooky guys, running through, killing all of this trash. And if you are after the sand pet, I would recommend looting these guys as well. It is quite a cool model. It's the model you can see them summon, the, like little sand elemental. It's nice. So run through those guys, no need to kill them, unless you want additional chance at the pet. And then eventually, we're going to be at the next boss. Now this once again was a bit of a hard solo, and it, it still is a little bit difficult. Um, I would recommend killing off the, the girl first, honestly, because if she gets empowered, she can summon a, a Zoa spirit, which can kill you nearly, even at 110. Um, so she is more annoying, but also the sand guy will put down a thing that roots you in place. So that is also obviously annoying, um, but 110 you shouldn't really have any issue with killing them, although I would recommend killing the woman off first just to reduce the chance of being cheesed, I guess. If you do have a talent or whatever that gets you out of roots, I would also re recommend picking that up as it will help you kill them quicker and uh, avoid any unfortunates, basically. So we have to wait for this unskippable RP. It does let you press escape and it will say, do you want to skip the cutscene? And you can click yes but it doesn't actually skip the cutscene. And I've recent this place has been bugging out and you won't actually put, be put down below. It'll put you on the bridge and you'll have to jump off and die. So, uh, But we're going to run past all of the trash and we're going to start hitting Totos. Nothing too special you need to know here. Um, he'll summon some turtles which will knock you up and be a, a pain basically. You can kill them and then later on the fight he will do a breath which you can interrupt with kicking one of the turtles. But you don't really have to do that. I mean he should die before that happens. Is he a turtle or a tortoise? I don't know. I mean, he's called Tortoise, so I assume he's a... He's not a turtle. So, we have to kill these kind of three guardians, and once they're dead, make sure you do cl uh, click the bells as well. If you forget to click the bells, then the boss won't spawn. Um, I've done it quite a few times where I've gone and just killed the guardians, and then I won't click the bell. I'll have to come all the way back and click the final bell. I might even do it in this video. It wouldn't surprise me if I did when I recorded this footage. I'll kill all the three of the Ancient Guardians. Once they're dead, you'll see uh, Megara cry arises from the mists. And then run over and we can start fighting the next boss. So this is going to be a case of basically a long fight. and You need to kill each of the heads. Well, at least every time you kill a head, it'll do damage to the body, I guess. And you can only kill one head at a time. So you'll kill a head. Eventually, once it's done with Rampage, it'll realize it's dead. And then it'll drop down. And then a new head will spawn. And it's literally just a rinse and repeat. I guess one thing to note is if a head's left up for a period of time, say you kill green, blue, green, blue, and you leave red alone, then the red will start to do more and more damage because it's been left alive so long. So if you are struggling, I guess you could do a 1-2-3 pattern, but realistically it should make zero difference. The Rampage does, it tickles a little bit, as you can see it is actually doing some kind of damage to me. And you could take that down the red head to reduce that damage, it does, but honestly it's like 5% of my HP that it's done right now. Isn't that big of a deal, every class has some kind of way of getting a little bit of HP back at least, so shouldn't be that bad. And then eventually when you kill enough heads, I think it's seven or nine, I'm pretty sure it's an odd number, the boss will die and you'll be able to get the chest and move on to the next boss. Eventually. It does take a quite a bit of time though, unfortunately. It's mainly the rampage that makes it long because even though the head's dead, you've still got to wait for it to finish rampage, which is like a 15 second cast or something. Um, but Gotta keep going through that. So the rampage is about to end. I think we have to kill one more head or two more. Oh, that was the final one, thank god. 
So the boss is dead and I left the redhead alive for the whole thing I'm pretty sure and it did pretty much no damage so you can see how scary it is. That was 10 man though so it is a little bit more scary on 25 man heroic but even then you, you can get the idea that it's not going to be that much scary. There is actually a fourth head in heroic which is the arcane head. It does add a, a little bit more to the fight but even still. Um, you do want to try and avoid those webs as you'll pull a spider. And you don't want to get too close to the gastropods as they will eat you, 100%. They'll kill you, they'll do every bit of damage, but it is worth killing them as they do drop a toy, which is a, a, a mini gastropod, and you can use that to kill other people's pets. The more you know. But you do want to try and avoid them as if you do get too close, I've done it quite a lot of times where I walk into melee and it'll die, and then I'll, it hasn't quite finished the animation, I like that. Um, it dies, but it still hasn't, like, died properly, and it'll just kill me. So, pretty unfortunate. Don't do what I do. Don't be a noob. And you should be A-OK. -okay. Now the spider's waiting for us. we got to bop him out of the way. And then we're on to the final fight once we run all the way back up. And that is going to be G-Kun, which is going to give us the, or hopefully give us the clutch of G-Kun mount. Which is quite a nice mount. Uh, I'm not too sure which one I'd prefer from this place. Probably the clutch, honestly. The spawn of Horridan is... The colouring's nice, but it isn't that special. There's quite a lot of uh, Triceratops mounts in the expansion anyway. So it's not that cool. You don't have to really kill any of this trash, honestly. And then we move over to G-Kun. Now, if you are struggling a little bit, you could move over to the right-hand side platform. You jump down where the kind of red beam is. Um, and if you kill the ads down there, you'll get an egg which will let you fly up and eat the food, and you'll do more damage, but you don't have to do that. But we didn't get a mount, so no luck for us this time, but hopefully you've had some luck from some of these runs. Uh, let me know if any of these videos or any of these raids do end up giving you a, a mount. So thanks for watching, guys. Look out for more videos coming soon. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. See ya.